Hello ladies and germs, welcome to Winners and Losers, the most critically acclaimed podcast on the internet. I am your host and I shall remain anonymous, like I said in the last episode, if anyone's heard it. And I am reporting from parts unknown. And today is 20th August, is it? Almost 20th August, you can say that. And it's midnight, it's quiet, you can maybe hear the chirping behind or maybe you can't. And we're going to start our second podcast. We're going to start a second live chat. What do we want to call it? Today, we're going to talk about a bunch of things. Like I said in the last podcast, anything and everything that interests me, we're going to talk about it. Anything that gets my dick hard was the term I used, did I? I don't know. Anything that gets me hard, that gives us a bone air, you know. On like a meter of 1 to 10 On a scale of 1 to 10 If it's above 6 I'm gonna talk about it On the, on the boner meter That is If it gives me a boner More than 6 Then Maybe we're gonna talk about it And today we have a bunch of things to talk about uh, Including films Some funny stuff And Some Fighting stuff when I say fighting, I don't need, mean real fight. I, well, obviously, I mean real fighting. I mean like more like sanctioned fighting, like mixed martial arts, MMA, UFC sort of thing. So UFC 305 just got over this Sunday. If you're living in India, Indian time Sunday, around 11, 11, 30 in the morning, it gets finished. I'm not sure about the US time. It gets finished in the midnight Saturday, maybe somewhere around that time. Okay, whatever that is, great card, great main card at least. Did not see the prelims, excuse me. I just had to burp, had to burp because I just had my protein shake. Well, I'm still having it. I still have my protein shake with me. Didn't go to the gym today because there was a festival here in India, Raksha Bandhan. If anyone's aware about it, if any, if people are not, then uh, let's keep it as is. And let's talk about this card first and get it out of the way soon. So, well, let me do some housekeeping notes first. Uh, we're going to talk about this UFC card. Then we're going to switch and talk about some things that happen in the cinema world and films. Like Shah Rukh Khan got uh, Pardo Al Carrera Arcona at Locarno Tourism Film Festival at, at Locarno Film Festival uh, which is a great honor maybe I don't know why he got it but he did Shah Rukh Khan is one of the legends of Indian cinema but I'm not sure whether he deserved it or not but you know it's it's their award it's their choice maybe they wanted a bigger audience see whenever these type of things happen like when an Indian is awarded especially a popular Indian gets awarded which means they get more clicks on internet because we have a population of somewhere around 150 crores which is a lot and uh, there's not much to talk about about that but uh, there's a great quote that uh, Shah Rukh Khan said it out in the speech in his acceptance speech which we'll get to and uh, maybe we'll try to analyze it or maybe just see I'm not an analyst I'm just an admirer I'm just an admirer of good work. I like good shit. I like good films. I like good books. I like good fights. Good art. Mixed martial art. It is an art as well. Everything is art. Not everything is art, but at least mixed martial art is an art. One of the best, man. If you're into it, it's one of the best. Most phenomenal experience. Uh, if uh, In the words of Luke Thomas, it is really arousing nah he didn't say arousing he said something I don't remember it, 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 it he, he might have said sobering I don't know he's he's a great guy man well and most of the uh, this verbal cues I picked from him like uh, let's get to the housekeeping notes I've picked from him neither here nor there I've picked from him mm, let's get into it shall we that too okay let's get into it uh Apart from that, I'm also going to talk about uh, this filmmaker called Kogunada. The guy who's made 
Columbus and After Yang two of the most brilliant films in recent time I haven't watched After Yang if I'm going to be honest I'm I'm planning to watch it soon I have watched Columbus and just absolutely loved it I just absolutely loved it I I might have watched it multiple times it's been a while since I've watched it or since I've rewatched it again uh I might get into it but I just want to talk about it for a while and then we might just fuck around and talk about James Joyce James Joyce's horny letters to his uh, girlfriend to his dirty little fuckbird as he liked to call her you know he was a pretty nice pretty nasty fella the irish writer for people who are not aware about James Joyce he's a very famous irish writer novelist whose uh, most famous work is Ulysses which i haven't read but yeah i've heard that it's really famous because famous stuff people always hear about it right and uh, we might talk about other things not so sure entirely right well without further ado let's get into it ufc 305 the main card absolutely bang on absolutely delivered you know from the first fight till the last first fight being the opening of the main card the Li Jing Liang versus Carlos Prates or Prates whatever it is called Bro, what a banger of a fight man Carlos Prates is a problem this guy is a problem he's he's from fighting nerds which is a, which is a brazilian mma gym and it's full of killers that gym is full of absolute killers people from that gym and just like establishing themselves left and right absolute killers uh, so he knocked out li jing liang face plant face first he just fell and before that he hurt him multiple times and finally just like face planted him bad bad ko man not a great look li jing liang has got an old he's like 36 37 so i don't see a really bright future for li jing liang great fighter but yeah uh, the second fight was tai tu iwasa versus charzinho rosenstrap which had a really weird judging because one of the judge gave all three rounds to tai tu iwasa which didn't make any sense and it was amazing because he gave 30 27 so the only reasonable explanation for that could be that he might have thought that he's giving the round to rosenstrap and he just got the names confused that is the only reasonable excuse for this otherwise other than that you can't you can't give a single round to tai and i i love tai i love tai's style tai is really people pleasing style he has a real people pleasing style but no he he didn't win that fight he didn't win a single round he rarely won any exchange third fight was fight of the night with Matthews Kemroth and Dan Hooker man Dan motherfucking Hooker this guy needs to be in a BMF fight this guy needs to be fighting for a baddest motherfucker ever cuz Dan Hooker really 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 does love this shit i mean during this guy is so amazing during uh during the break after second round you know they get a a minute break and in that he was telling his corner that boys i love this shit and he was like so 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 fuck it was it was really a great moment i really loved it absolutely loved it dan hooker won this fight via decision it was a close fight and uh, in my opinion dan did comparatively more damage to gamrod than gamrod did and gamrod had a decent control time in the first round maybe after that he got shut down he got shut down but gamrod uh, to his credit fought really well standing he was trying to hurt dan he wasn't like just straight up shooting uh, he he tried to make this a stand up fight but after a while after once he started getting picked apart then he had to wrestle that's that's his bread and butter right the co main Kai Kara France versus Steve Ursic. Kai is a beast. He's a little midget beast. Kai, don't blink. Kara France is a beast. He knocked out Steve Ursic in the first round. 
he literally knocked him i mean he didn't knock him out cold uh he threw he threw a combination like jab cross right hook nah he threw a jab cross and a left hook i guess a jab right hand and a left hand several times but finally he connected with one and the left hook just steve was like just fell fell down and just like his head bounced or maybe he didn't bounce but it he felt pretty bad and then after that he just he just put it on him and just tko'd him great fight man flyweights are just so fucking amazing ufc is actually i i feel like ufc is trying to figure out a way to remove the division which is really a sad state of affairs if i'm being honest cuz flyweights are fun they are really fun they put on a show whenever they whenever they get a chance and the main event well this was something else because i genuinely thought izzy looked super good izzy looked super good in it i gave two rounds to ddp and one round to izzy and in the fourth round ddp submitted him he hurt izzy first and after that he just ddp is just relentless he is over zealous with his offense he is so fucking offense oriented like anything else like nothing anyone's ever seen especially at the highest level especially if you become a champion people try to play it safe when they become a champion but not this guy this guy just chases finishes he really does chases finishes he is a brilliant fight iq and he has a gas tank he looks gassed he really does fight like a drunken drunken master or something but he is really really good not as technical but he he knows his shit he does know his shit that was a phenomenal main event so let's see what's next for him and that just sums up about everything ufc 305 now let's get into the other bits first of it being SRK Shahrukh Khan getting a Pardo Al Career Arcano at Larcano Tourism something <laughs> which is Larcano Film Festival uh, award and uh, yeah I I already talked about whether I don't know whether Shahrukh deserves it or not I don't know whether anyone deserves any award or not but uh, maybe he does or maybe he doesn't I'm not the one to say he hasn't made a decent film in a while I can say that being a fan of him a super fucking fan of him love this guy looked up to him when I was a kid but he hasn't made a single good film in in a long time but here is a quote that shahrukh khan gave it in a speech i'm going to paraphrase it he said cinema need not be political cinema need not be polemical i don't know what polemical means that's that's what i'm saying he didn't say it he said cinema need not be political cinema need not be polemical cinema need not summonized cinema cinema need not intellectualized intellectualized fuck excuse me cinema need not moralized art and cinema only needs to say what it feels from the heart that was a banger quote that that genuinely was a bang i don't know who wrote it there's a good chance he wrote it or his pr team did but that's a banger quote man I might I might get it on my t-shirt or I might get it up on my wall somewhere man cuz that's that's a really really bang a code last line art and cinema only needs to say what it feels from the heart fuck me I can relate I I I don't know I can relate like I can it really cinema doesn't need to be political that's one thing I can say for I mean it could be it could be but uh, especially if you see with the context of bollywood and the films that are being made recently and films that are doing well in the box office recently if you see most of these films are political like highly political and uh, it just it just breaks my heart to see that people people wanting to watch these kinds of film instead of instead of something that was that came from heart or that was made as an art you know and uh, i'm 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 not going to lie cinema need not be intellect- intellectualized is is a great line as well because many a times many a filmmakers 
they try to they they have this superior complex superiority complex or whatever it is called excuse me and what was i talking about yeah cinema needs need not intellectualize intellectualized fuck i can't say intellectualized properly it's a single word intellectualized 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 okay so cinema need not intellectualized that's deep that's deep some something something such as deep you know and i don't know why <laughs> does that make me dumb yeah i'm not an intellectual fuck it i'm just a dumb guy who loves cinema i really do love cinema i really do love cinema man i i want to make some good cinema in this life and yeah that's the only thing i got from locarno film festival uh, other than this i'm i'm one of those guys who you know i just get on youtube and i i'll search for a 3 hour long youtube video uh, which would be titled something like you're having coffee in some obscure japanese cafe and you're listening to japanese jazz and it's a 3 hour long video and i just play it and i just have it on my tablet and i just imagine myself being a being being in a murakami novel or something i just daydream about that shit i'm i'm one of those guys okay so let's talk about i guy my guy kogunada so kogunada is actually a south korean born filmmaker but he was brought up in america bro this guy is so brilliant as a filmmaker his f- debut film columbus ah oh, i mean you can k- clearly see his inspiration being ozu being richard linklater being bresson being all these guys he used to he used to make film essays like video essays he literally used to do that he is one of those guys you know he'd make essays i mean his most famous essay is hands of bresson which uh, robert bresson is a f- is one of the best French filmmaker if I'm not incorrect I hope he is I haven't seen any of his film if I'm being honest but I've read yeah he is a French filmmaker I'm correct so uh, no I haven't seen any of his film I have heard a lot about oh has it Balthazar his film Balthazar oh has it Balthazar I haven't seen it Diary of a Country Priest I've heard a lot about it as well Big Pocket yeah that too so his inspiration is ozu the japanese filmmaker that's what that's where he got his name from kogunada because uh, the guy who wrote most of the ozu films uh, was called kogunoda or something right yeah kogunoda he was a frequent screenwriter of ozu's films and he picked it, he picked this name and he called himself kogunada and kogunada has till now made two feature films and he's he has directed some okay he's he has one more film upcoming which is a big beautiful journey features marco robbie colin farrell and phoebe waller bridge man and it's a romantic fantasy film and somebody else has written it this i think this is the first time he's directing someone else's work because before that he's always written his own films yeah yeah So his first film Columbus let's talk about this let's talk about this film this guy wrote this film directed this film edited this film and music is given by Hammock if you if you're not aware who Hammock is Hammock is an ambient band a rock band man it's it's uh, one of those you know have you seen if if you if you've seen 20th century women by Mike Mills It's one of those kind of soundtracks. I love those soundtracks. Hammock is a brilliant band. Is a brilliant band, and the music of this film, Columbus, was just so fucking brilliant, like amazing. And uh, it was made. It was made in twenty to twenty seventeen. It features John Cho and Halle Lou Richardson. Halle Lou Richardson, or whatever she is called, and. It's about a town called Columbus, which is in Indiana, which is in USA, and it's about a South Korean guy 
who watches over his estranged father and one day he meets a young woman who works in a library near the hospital where his father is kept and the young woman whose name is Casey she lives with her mother who is a recovering drug addict and it's it's really a sobering experience watching this film it's it really just hits the nerve hits the nail if i if, if i may say so on uh, i don't know whether i'm using the phrase correctly or not i'm pretty sure i'm not but yeah really a phenomenal film okay with that i i don't know how much time we've covered but if we've covered somewhere around 20 minutes we which we have uh so i'm not going to talk about the james wells for people who are interested uh the paris review has an article about james wells's love letters to his dirty little fuckbirds where he he writes some nasty shit to his lover nora he just i i'll just read one introduction maybe i shouldn't he's like off oh. he says my sweet little horish nora ah Nah, man, I can't read it. I can't read it. It's so, it's so dirty. It's so nasty. Yeah, so maybe you can read it if you are into such kind of thing. If you are into horny literature, then maybe that will fit your ally. That will be up your ally. Or whatever. So, with that, I think we're gonna end this podcast. I hope it's recorded properly. I hope. Yeah, I'm not gonna hope much. Just gonna record things. So with that if you have any suggestion if you have anything that you need you want me to talk about you can just always put a comment i would love that i mean at least i'll know that someone's listening if and someone's listen till the end so if you have listened till the end i'll really appreciate if you can put a comment below and just maybe just say fuck you say whatever but just acknowledge that I'm heard. And with that, with that on that sad note, on that really sad note, I'm I'm just going to check out log off, say goodbye. Cheers. Have a good one.